As we know in an OS, there are two modes of operation, kernel mode and user mode. In kernel or privileged mode, the processor is capable of running privileged instructions. In user mode, the processor cannot run privileged instructions. That is, it can only run ordinary MIPS1 instructions. The key difference between the two modes is that the user mode does not have direct access to some OS services such as memory, hardware, and so on. So when you use an OS, you are going to be performing various processes. Each process is effectively confined to its own box of memory. But what if you want to access a service of the OS that cannot be directly accessed from the user mode? A process or program in execution, when they require functionality from the operating system, will do so by calling function-like entities known as system calls, which are interfaces into the operating system. It is the programmatic way in which a computer program requests a service from the kernel of the operating system on which it is executed. This may include hardware-related services, creation and execution of new processes, and communication with integral kernel services such as process scheduling. System calls essentially provide an interface between a process and the operating system. To make this clearer, we will see an analogy. If the special privileges such as access to hardware, memory and so on or lockers in a bank, kernel mode acts as a cashier who has direct access to these lockers. The pass that the user gives to the cashier is the system call. So basically, a system call is an interface for a process to invoke functions in OS using special instructions. Suppose we want to write a program to copy the contents of one file into another. First, we will need the name of the file that we need to copy. Then, to display a prompt in the monitor, the process makes a system call to access the output device, that is the monitor. Then, the user will need to give the file name by either typing them in the console or selecting them by using an interactive interface. Our program will need to make system call to the kernel to enable it to access the input and output devices. That is, a system call to take input from the keyboard then to display the output on the monitor. Further, upon completion or failure of the process at any point, the program would need to notify the user with some message or a prompt. This again would require a system call. Now let's see some examples of system calls. Create. To create a new file. Unlink to remove an existing file, open, to open a file, read, to read data from a file, write, to write data into a file, fork, to create a new process, exec, to change the memory image of a process. Exit. To terminate a process. Wait. To make a parent process sleep till the child process terminates. To recall, the architecture of most modern processors involves a security model. For example, the rings model specifies multiple privilege levels under which software may be executed. A program is usually limited to its own address space so that it cannot access or modify other running programs or the operating system itself and is usually prevented from directly manipulating hardware devices. However, many applications need access to these components. So, system calls are made available by the operating system to provide well-defined safe implementations for such operations.